Potholes and Penguins with Barry and Trimby. Yeah, so I shushed one of Anna's friends one time. Um, she is a lo- she's a loud girl. <laughs> and she was holding court and we were out for lunch. And uh, I just had this outer body <laughs> experience <laughs> where like, I didn't even think, I just wanted her to be quiet so badly. <laughs> I didn't even, I just lost control of what I did and just made it happen without bearing any understanding of the consequences she was just mid mid like <laughs> loud sentence i just went Shh. <laughs> oh my god at, at a dinner no it was a, a bit bit more casual, bit more casual it, was, um, it was in a vodka um you can you remember what she was saying no <laughs> I, for some reason i have you pictured with a, a mouth full of food and you just go, through, through your your coleslaw cabbage salad, rotisserie um, chicken. Uh, <laughs> yeah, how did it go down then? Yeah, how did it go down? Um, she did, she pretended she didn't notice. Did, Anna did noticed. You, did you go? Oh, I, so no, it I did. Was I, that I, it was that. <laughs> like, like it came out so uh, such Shh. a blur. Yeah, it, it was. <laughs> <laughs> It was like a reflex knee jerk reaction. Uh, and then your face gives you away afterwards. <laughs> it, it was the emoji. There's an emoji that perfectly <laughs> shows my face afterwards. It's that guy I told you about this guy before who went to BBC One for uh, an interview to be a janitor. Oh, and yeah, there, I was love a, this guy. there was a, a guy supposed to be a specialist, supposed to be on talking about uh, the technical side of the streaming in the music industry um so he's a very tech heavy guy that was supposed to be on and they got the people mixed up so the guy who's <laughs> applying for the janitor role <laughs> ended up <laughs> on the news <laughs> and the, the the anchor woman said and now we welcome mr guy chamley who or something like that who's here and he just goes <laughs> yeah. to here but he just did that face Look it up if you haven't seen it. it I've seen it. I've seen it. It's so good. Phenomenal. But that he should be an emoji on his own. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, How was your weekend, some, Barry? Sometimes people need to be shushed, man. Good. <laughs> I've got a poem. Might, it might have poem. been good. It might have been good for for that person. Yeah. Maybe she took it away. Run. If if he didn't bring it up, maybe she took it away with her anyway. And if she is a very uh, maybe um, you know someone who might go in and have a think about their actions. Maybe mm-hmm. she would have looked mm-hmm. inward and said, maybe I, sometimes I should just shh. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a big turning point in her life. Has it been? Don't know. I haven't heard from her. <laughs> she doesn't listen to the show, does she? <laughs> sometimes if I listen carefully, I can hear her. She lives, <laughs> she lives the other side of Belfast. It's <laughs> <laughs> there watching the crown at home. She's going, shh. <laughs> hear Maggie Thatcher. Uh, I have a poem that I'd like to start with. <clears throat> I'm doing a Limerick accent because it makes me sound more um, like a, people might take me serious if I put on more of a Limerick accent. I hope I get this right because I, I wrote it very rough. Busting out of lockdown like a bat out of hell. I've got insanely high cholesterol and I'm feeling quite unwell. Since the 19th of October, our movements have been restricted. They sedated us with rugby golf and the crown was self-inflicted. My father had a heart attack. My mother is out of work. With the DHS and Nightline van beaming in like Captain Kirk. But I am tired of doing nothing. I want to go to work. I'm sick of social media and listening to jerks. So come the 4th of October, I'm going for a pint. I'll order my substantial, I'll just beg me a kind. I'll be talking to anyone who will have me. If I have to shout across the room, I'll pothole every last one of ye, and it won't be over Zoom. So come here. You. Yeah. You. 
how are you? How are your folks? Your kids? How, how's the family? You're looking well. It's actually great to see you. It really is. You're a great person and I miss talking to you. You're a great manifestation of life on this planet, flaking around the sun in this thing we call the universe. Don't forget that. And smile because I love you. Everyone loves you. It's Christmas, lads. Let's have a bit of crack. Do you believe in aliens? Question mark. The end. That's all. Thanks. Lovely. It's a lovely Beautiful. poem. <laughs> Did you write Beautiful. that on your birthday yesterday? I didn't. I wrote it today. The day after my birthday. Maybe a more reflective day. Mm. Mm. The day mm. after your birthday. There's a lot going on on the birthday. Are you time travelling as well? Because you go for a point on the 4th of October. Mm. Oh, 4th of December. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <Yes. laughs> Absolutely well picked up, yeah. I made a bollocks of that, didn't I? Nah, no, 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 that wasn't... My, if I was going to have one one issue, um, um, bringing up your dad's heart attack is a, is a bit of a buzzkill. <laughs> 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 no one knows about it. <laughs> to be real, we have to be real on this show. My yeah, but dad. you can't go heart attack one minute, aliens the next. Like, you got to decide <laughs> what's the tone. We're 100 miles an hour here on this show. A bit of everything. A poem has to have it all, doesn't it? A poem has to have the sadness and the reality of your dad having a heart attack. A mild it was heart Beautiful. A mild, a mild it's heart beautiful. attack. Beautiful. But then, like, aliens. On the other end, they're, they could be around the corner. So we have to keep that in mind. A lot of Yashvili's. Yeah. Y- who? <laughs> <laughs> the boys are playing for Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ima- like, would, imagine an alien came down now. <laughs> and was ins- Like, sometimes I get so wound up that when I'd be listening to too much Joe Rogan that I'm convinced there's a fucking alien in my cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> Eating your cornflakes. <laughs> And then turns around, I listen to someone else who's a little bit more uh, sciencey, and they're like, "There is no aliens, you absolute dope." But imagine an alien came down, and we had to deal with that. And then my dad had a heart attack a few minutes later. It's very possible. It's not you. You never consider those two things happen at the same time. You always <laughs> think that when the aliens come down, all the little things that are get annoying, like your father having a heart attack, all those little <laughs> things <laughs> become. <laughs> Won't happen. You always think it'll be smooth. It'll just we can all just focus on the alien. But <laughs> Annabelle has a, has a has a sore throat. I had to get her antibiotic. She was up half the night last night. I'd be in an awful place if an alien arrived down today. I just wouldn't be in the headspace to be dealing. Not with. today, mate. Honestly, <laughs> not today. <laughs> yeah, go back into that place and finish those cornflakes. <laughs> And it's the lockdown has ended. I just want to go for a pint. Jeez, yeah. not today. Um, but that's that's what was in my head. I, I shout out to Mick, the the granddad, who is doing fantastic. He had a little bit of a blip, but he's flying. It's just for anyone who's wondering out there, because and to him, because he listens to this, he's going to fucking kill me now. Um, go on, Mick. Go on, Mick. We love you, bye. Yeah, he's great. He had a few stints put in. I didn't know what they were, but they're they're in there now anyway. I know what they are now. Stints are they? Stints, stints, stints. Yeah. That's incredible what they can do now, isn't it? Yeah, they inject them into him. And he was out the next day. I went for a walk, a big long walk yesterday, and he was grand. I actually, it was my birthday yesterday, and um, I met him, and I brought Mick the baby, and we went for a walk. And yeah. he looked at me, and he goes, do you, do you have any interest in your appearance anymore? <laughs> Look at the state here, you're pure disheveled. And I was wearing... <laughs> I was wearing this fleece that I'm wearing now, and this is my birthday present from Orla. She bought me this yesterday. It's lovely. <laughs> He's like, I had a heart attack last week, and I look better than you. Yeah. I was like, this is brand new. He thought it was a hand-me-down, like, or something that I would have had back in the 80s. I was like, this is Paul Galvin from Dunn's store. It's back to Dunn's. We should get Dunn's to sponsor us. Paul Galvin fleece from Dunn's that I love. It's very nice and warm. Um... What else did I do? So, you know, 2020, most people at this stage, you included, have had your birthday in 2020. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's anyone, especially from March on, your birthday was never going to be living up to what it was in the past. So my birthday, if we hadn't gone through the last eight months, it would have been probably a gig on Saturday night. Follow, prior to the gig, would have had a dinner with the lads. Mm. 
and had a pint, maybe now a whiskey and a coffee over it, and then into the gig, played the gig, you would have done something funny with the crowd that would have made it me feel special and happy <laughs> birthday. And then we would have come off the stage and we would have gone on, on the absolute batter and gone bananas and go and climbing trees or something, and we'd had a great time. Yeah. And then today we'd had family over and we'd had a cake and everyone would be just falling over you because you're hungover and it's your birthday. And then none of that happened, obviously. So I knew none of that was going to happen. So I decided in the, in, to, to do the exact opposite of that and do the most ball-aching thing I could possibly do on my birthday. So then whatever happened on my birthday would be better. So I went out in my, in my garden and I scraped the moss from in between the cobbles on the, on the front the, and back. The metaphorical toenails. Of your garden. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the cobbles. That little goblin <laughs> fungus that you see underneath your toenail. Yeah, uh, you scrape them out. With a knife. What? On my hands and knees. You have to you have to cut it straight across though at 90 degrees, <laughs> otherwise the moss will ingrow. <laughs> <laughs> have you done that? I've heard of this <laughs> technique. Um, I was just... Um, <laughs> Taking the analogy with the toenails a step further. I know, further. yeah. I, we'll come back to that, so because I, okay. I, I, I've I've heard of this toenail technique, but I've never done it. So yeah, I did that, and uh, it was it was ball like you know. Yesterday was just completely dark, but I, it was. But then it was it was so rewarding. I felt like a real man who'd done work, and then hmm. my cake was delish, extra delicious. Then, yeah, your garden looked incredible, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, no, because the last time I saw your garden would have been the video of um, Killer. Flying a beer to your house via drone, <laughs> yes, and it, it and wasn't in wasn't in great shape then. No, no, it wasn't pre lockdown. Fa- Lockdown's was, been good for the garden. Yeah, my father in law's unreal, so he came over and helped. <clears throat> um, well, he did most of it to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know. um, Should we have a metaphorical point now and oh pretend yes. like it's fourth of December? Mm. Yeah. What are we drinking today? We are drinking. More of a phenomenon. Oh, and it is an IPA from sorry. Boundary Brewery. I opened too early. I didn't do a thing. Sorry. This is an IPA dry hopped with 16 grams per litre of Nissan, Savon and Citra. Nice. Sounds like it's a Orangey. <laughs> bottle of white wine infused beer. Sounds like Fanta again. <laughs> Fanta La Orange. Fanta La Orange. The old Boundary Brewery making up ingredients again. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I I was able to buy it in my local off license the other day. Actually, were you? Oh, really? Yeah, cr- yeah. In um, in Ennis. Go away. Yeah. So I bought uh, in Bongo that one. Cheers, cheers, folks. Cheers. I look forward to potholing some of our penguins whenever we see each other over the next few weeks in a restaurant. <laughs> so in Bongo, I think is um. Is that an old one? And then they've just re- released uh, in Bongalicious. There was some artwork in the Facebook group <laughs> with us um, bringing some in Bongalicious across the border. Oh, that was very good. <laughs> was yeah, brilliant. that brilliant. was brilliant. <clears throat> I'm delighted you can buy that down here. Well done. Or, or yeah. if someone may have smuggled it, well done. Yeah, so we're flying. Anyway, Boundary Brewing, um, dot co-op forward Coop. slash... <laughs> coop forward slash shop and uh, the discount code is Will Addison reason so. being is because we love Will Addison a lot of people who have not watched this show from the start don't understand why we have Will Addison as our passcode and they don't understand why when we say Will Addison we play this music And the reason we do that is because we love Will Addison, but we're unsure of whether it is a reciprocal love. <laughs> so how will we know? Maybe he might do it for Christmas and show us the love. It is just recipro- potholing the shite out of him altogether. Like, no, it, it's the same. He loves us as well. Oh, he does. He because does. I think it might have been the first time I met Will because I never played with him. He signed for Ulster after I left, and uh, first time I met him was at Chris Henry's testimonial at City Hall in Belfast. And uh, and they was like, oh, hi. And he goes, oh, Trimby, how are you? And uh, he goes, I listen to the podcast. I love the podcast. 
I'm a penguin. I'm not sure if he said I'm a penguin. <laughs> Actually, you know, I think about it. It didn't exist at that stage, I don't yeah. think. Yeah. He was pre penguin, but um, yeah, he definitely listens. And then we interviewed him before a live show in, again, Belfast. And it was, it was really awkward because we all had the hods for each other. <laughs> <laughs> We're just winking at him and blowing the kisses. <laughs> Them he, lads are weird. Yeah. Although he, he loves it. He had, we had him on again. He's, he's done, been on us a few times. We must get him on. I didn't just do him on a part of it because he's injured, but, um, he might come on over Christmas because he's a happy fella. Mm. Yeah. Will we? Yeah. 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 Let's do that. Okay. Um, what else has gone on in your world? How is your Dermy? How's the DJ going? Oh, good. Yeah, um, I, my other, my show was on this evening, so I'm flat out. I'm multimediaing to shite out of it. Where? Yeah. Um, it's so it's an all Irish show on Clear FM. Yeah. What? Give us your some man for your music. Give us um, your favorite track that you played tonight. Um. Favourite track I played tonight was a track by Susan O'Neill and Mick Flannery called Baby Talk. And it actually won Radio 1 original folk song of the year during the week. I saw it. I saw that. Great tune. Great tune. Yeah. Yeah. Love Mick Flannery. I had an encounter with a wasp uh, last week. <laughs> yes. It's late enough, is it? Yeah, I know. Right. So I stay at my nana once a week and I went in and I was, I, I drink two cans of Guinness. So I was in the bed drinking or have, haven't had my two can, tans, can, cans of Guinness. Nana was in bed and I was, you know, as you would be with your little Guinness glow inside in the single bed listening to music. And over the last couple of weeks and I've been in there, I could hear this mad just once or twice during the night, just a big insect flying through the air. Didn't hear God, it wasn't Nana. or see anything. <laughs> <laughs> Nana's been dressing up in her wasp. <laughs> so I was lying in bed listening to music and I just felt a twitch on my eyebrow and I just slapped it off my eyebrow and I turned on the light and there was a huge wasp that I just flicked against the wall. Um, was he stunned? I'd say it was a lady wasp. I'd say it was a, <laughs> I'd say it was a queen wasp. <laughs> trying to, was she trying to come on to you? Is that, maybe, she was a, maybe it was a... Homosexual wasp. What would you have done if you had a big wasp in your room at that point in November? Let him out the window. My instinct, I, I had to get rid of her straight away because I was like, I, I couldn't deal with the wasp in the room. So I, I couldn't get her out the window either. She was, uh, I, apparently I had a chat with her big? and she was, she was hibernating the inside in the wardrobe. Right. And uh, yeah, I had to get rid of her. <laughs> she tell you that? Yeah. Yeah, before I before I smushed her with the, smushed my empty can of Guinness. Oh, what a way to go. Crater, there you go, wasps. Uh, but you always hear, though, that if you squash the wasps, this could be an old wives' tale, but if you squash it, then the whatever comes out of the wasp then attracts other wasps, and then they all come and get you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like drinking cans. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is that real or did you just make that up? I didn't make it up, but I'm not sure it's real. <clears throat> I thought you were going to say if you burst the wasp, like a load of million wasps will then come flying out of the wasp. Well, that's always my fear with spiders because if you've seen videos of that, have you? Mm. That's you you killed them and they come after you. Loads more burst out of it like it's a like a mother spider who's just about to hatch its fully functioning <laughs> baby spiders. <laughs> Yeah, there's a there's a video there's a video on YouTube of it and it looks like once they stop really, yeah? I don't know but if they, um, listen we were just talking about aliens a minute ago <laughs> so <laughs> let's just, let's just go there um, so, someone stomps on a spider and then the spider it becomes like the one of the final um, episodes of Game of Thrones and there's just white walkers or baby oh. spiders everywhere and they just take off and just cover the whole kitchen. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure. That's not. We're getting away from the wasp here. The wasp <laughs> is a juice that is secreted when the body when the wasp is dead, and then his wasp friends. Although he's probably last wasp standing, so mm, <laughs> you're probably safe. She, yeah, or like the crows that I was talking about. You get the crows out of the chimney, and then the other crows come out after you. If you if you kill a crow, you'll be crows will be coming after you for the rest of your life. Because there was a story about a guy who in. Uh, uh, university in England in Oxford who did a study and testing stuff on crows and he was was back in the day like so he was able to cut them up and 
you, you do whatever experiments on them. And then it turns out the other crows knew that he'd been doing them. And for the rest of his life, he was followed around the place and crows would be just attacking him all the time, <laughs> flying down and pecking at his head. Wow. Mm. So, uh, I, yeah, watch out with the wasps. I'd always have that in my head that the other wasps will know. It's like if you beat the Georgians, <clears throat> if you don't beat, if you beat them too much, then all the Georgians, anytime you pass a Georgian, they'll just come after you. So you have to... They limply, shoot you, don't you? You have, to, they have to, you have to limply beat them. Like you're sorry about beating them. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ireland have had an absolute blinder today then, yeah. if that's the case. They're, they're laughing. No Georgians will ever be bothering us anyway. It would be grand. We'll get to that, or will we bother? Um... Trimby, have you said a little bit? I do, yeah. <laughs> Go on, sure. Hey, scoodly, that little lap, the little diary up, the little lap, 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 the little the little lap, the little lap, the little lap, the the little lap, the little the little lap, the little lap, the little the little lap, 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 the little the little lap, the little it was as if her body language insisted that she adopt a more motherly or grown-up role. She turned to me and asked, So what did you do at work yesterday, Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> Three years old and she's already making better small talk than me. <laughs> Usually I'm like, So Molly, um, <laughs> do, you, uh, do you like stuff? <laughs> I thought, well, she's asked for it and I've recently watched Captain Incredible. What would he do? We secured enough private investment to close the round, Molly. Apart from that, we looked at writing another sponsored article for a football website with an audience of influential heads of department in that space. She looked at me and her eyes very clearly said, don't be a dick, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Molly, don't try and be something you're not, unless, of course, you're Johnny May. Johnny raced the skeleton in the Winter Olympics for a number of years before being told he's too tall and skinny. The British Olympic Transitional Committee got their heads together and decided that rugby was the sport for him. Yes, he catches the ball like it's a teddy bear and passes it like it's a tumour, but sure, he's fast and isn't that the main thing? <laughs> where did you... Where did where did you begin with that one? Was it uh, uh, Johnny May? <clears throat> did he actually? Did he actually? Was that true? <clears throat> Any of what you said about Johnny May? No, the it's Olymp all the Olympic. Like, as as is true with most of the episodes so far. There's nothing <laughs> nothing about the spiders is true. Wasps isn't true. Aliens aren't true. And crows, Johnny May did not. Crows, um, crows could be true. <laughs> crows could be true. Could yeah, be, could be. Johnny May didn't race the skeleton. <clears throat> Oh, he could well have, just like the aliens could well come. He he could have crashed in Roswell. He could have well have done that for whatever that thing is that you're talking about, the skeleton. He's um, definitely probably... What is the skeleton? Oh, the skeleton. I thought Bob Slay was too... I definitely wanted a win, an obscure kind of winter Olympic mm. event. I thought Bob, Slay was, Bob Slay was too mainstream, mm. only because it featured in a, a movie that we watched when we were 10. Yeah. <laughs> What's that called again? Cool runnings. Yes, yeah. Um, so I went for skeleton. Mm. He catches the ball, sorry, like it's... Um, yes, I know. His hands out like this. Like <laughs> yes. He's, like he's a clown. It's so sort. weird, I know. And it's so funny how, <laughs> how unconventional he looks, but how incredibly good he is. It's he so looks weird. He looks like, like a weirdo. It's like, if, you, if I was like, what are you, why are you weirdo? Why are you catching the ball like that? You big weirdo. <laughs> yeah. And then so he looks like a guy who, yeah, you'd pull off a bobsleigh and you'd go here, look, you're too big to be in a bobsleigh, but you're really fast. Go over there and play with the rugby players. And they're, and Or in school when you get a guy who's really fast and you make him play because your school isn't that good. And But they are usually sh shit until you like hand them the ball and they can run straight, but he's actually a brilliant rugby player. So it's weird that he... He still looks like a weirdo. That doesn't know how to catch the ball. I know it's it's. I actually don't even think it's his ha just his hands. It's his whole arms. <laughs> They're like splayed. <laughs> the, the, but the elbows still come in of it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> he um he reminds me of uh, American Psycho that film. Do you know American Psycho? Hmm. With, uh, what's his name? 
Yeah, uh, Christian Bale. Christian Bale is um, Patrick Bateman, where he's a bit of a quite serious and but a maniac, um, <laughs> wanting to like a serial killer. I wonder if Johnny May is a serial killer. His mustache. On the show. His mustache is yeah. Me too. He could be a weirdo, um, like Ben Healy. The way Craig Casey said Ben Healy was a weirdo. I I would hope that Johnny May is a weirdo as well. Although if we keep slagging all these people we're going to get on the show, we're just maybe ostracizing they, potential guests. Maybe they want to come on and and maybe they embrace the fact that they're... It's not necessarily a negative thing I'm saying. I think it just makes me interested in talking to them. He's got an unbelievable mustache, so I am giving him a compliment. I think it's probably the best. He should he should not just have it for November. He should have the mustache year-round. All year-round. Yes, yeah, like I agree. A, a fighter pilot. From have you ever seen that film Memphis Bell? It's a nineteen nineties film about a World War Two bomber plane going for. Is that the one where uh, Tom Cruise is sliding around in socks? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's not, he's not in it. No, do you know who's in it? Um, ben Healy's in it. <laughs> oh really? What's his the guy name? from uh, yeah. from P- Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction, the red haired lad. He's in it. That's one of his first films. But there's a guy in it who looks has got the tash exactly like Johnny May. Um, that, that's so. Oh, to, to answer your original question, I yeah, when when I was out on a walk, Molly said that he said well, I can't believe she said, uh, "What did you do at work yesterday, Daddy?" Like it was such a funny question. So that She's I thought it, straight away, I thought right, there's definitely something funny here, and then I just couldn't. I was just fascinated with Johnny May, so I had two st- two starts really. So I just find that's why the fit is a bit artificial because I tried to squeeze two things in. I noticed, but it was fine. <laughs> um, so did did she have that reaction? What when you explained um, what you did? Oh no, nah. nah, I made she, that better. She um, <clears throat> she said, "Dad, Dad, he's a fucking nerd." <laughs> My God. <laughs> Well, she just <laughs> she got distracted. She she wasn't really listening. <laughs> Pretend she just went shh. <laughs> 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 she is a she's a rock star. I think Molly is. She's pretty funny, man. Uh, she's hilarious. Yeah, because she reminds me of of an old an older person, an older soul who would say something like that. I'm not surprised she said that. Mm. I, I, but funnily enough, I, I was talking to my nieces and nephews yesterday uh, down in UL. We went for a walk, and I, sometimes I don't know how what to how to talk to them, uh, like what to talk. Like, do I talk about computer games or mm. a, a doll or something? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I felt there was a massive gap, um, I, especially when they get towards that moody teenage years where you definitely don't know how to talk to them because they think you're an asshole as opposed to you just being uh, their lovable uncle when they're a little bit younger yeah that's a shame whenever that happens that transition happens it doesn't it mm. remember Tommy Tiernan talking about his young fellow who's, who's like 12 or 13 and heading into adolescence and he was like I hope to see him on the other side for a game of pool or something like that <laughs> um, <laughs> which is certainly how I feel yeah, my so so Molly, I think gets her kind of that kind of quirkiness. I think she gets that quirkiness from Anna. Jack gets more from me. Well, Jack gets a, high, a little bit of both of us because I just found out the other day I picked him up from school and the teacher came out for a word. So I thought he must be must be in a bit a bit of bother here. He'd been brought up to the front of class because he's P two. <laughs> uh, she brought him up to the front of class and she didn't want him coming home saying, "Oh." Uh, the teacher brought me up to front of class without an explanation. So she said, listen, he's he's really smart. It's okay. He's really smart. But I can't get him to stop talking. And do you remember <laughs> I was telling you before about me and under 21s, Mark McDermott, the coach at the time. I've never come across anyone who's hated me more than Mark, Dermott, Mark McDermott because I was just a bit dozy and a bit aloof. I remember I was telling you before how we were away in Scotland, under 21s, I think it was, and I sat down. It was very obviously a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> I sat down at my table and expected someone to come over and like take my order a knife and, and fork in your hand yeah uh, just because I was half asleep half the time when I was a youngster <laughs> say a youngster Jack's five I was 20, <laughs> 20. Right? so it's not really like for like 
<laughs> but he, I just remember him at the next table. He just looked over. I just goes, shake yourself, Trimby, would you? And he was <laughs> disgusted with me. So anyway, I was a bit of a space cadet when I was a youngster. And, uh, and he gets Anna, that from you. He gets that from me, yeah. But he also gets like, Anna's the talker. I was, I was quiet enough, shy enough. So Anna's a talker and I'm the space cadet and he is a space cadet who doesn't stop talking. So he's got the worst of both worlds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have, did you notice that from early on? Early. Uh, early yeah. Early yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. And what does he do? You, what do you talk about? Would he, would you give him a similar response? Would he, would he be like, no, you, it's, you have to engineer a situation where you're going to get crack out of him. And it, mm. it's, Usually on um, Fridays or Saturdays, we would go and get a wee takeaway or Chinese or an Indian or something. And he would come in the car with me. And that's when you get the best chat out of him. That's when you he would like come so up you with a game. Him, you have when to I'm play. on him one. Yeah, I think that's... Yeah. <clears throat> so I need to do him and niece and nephews get a bit of one-on-one time, a bit of crap. It's hard. See, this is the problem. I used to be able to do that. But you can't do it in lockdown. It's another reason why. I'm sick of it. Yeah. It's more, it's more, it's more housekeeping <clears throat> issues with Jack. I said to him the other day, Look at me, look at me, look at me. Like you have to look at me, look at me, look at me. <laughs> Eventually, I was like this, right? Mm. Go into your room, take off your pajamas and put on your clothes. I went in 10 minutes later. He was lying on his back. He had his pajama top still on, his <laughs> bottoms off. And he had his legs, <laughs> he had his legs in the air and he was playing with the toy. <laughs> I said, shake yourself some, <laughs> would you? <laughs> I was like me most mornings, to be honest. <laughs> Orla trying to get me out of bed. Anyway, um, that's all great. That was a long part one, but as I said earlier on, we've got much to talk about in part two, lads. <laughs> so we'll take a quick break and see what we can fucking come up with. Bottles and Penguins is an independent production. And what I mean by that is... It may sound like we don't know what we're talking about. You might even think Barry's hardly even played professional rugby and Dermy likes hurling. We want you to think that. It takes a lot of preparation to sign this unprepared. We work very, very hard at what we do. And we want to make this show the best podcast in the world. For just a five or a month, you can help us do that. Go to patreon.com forward slash potholes and penguins and you can help me make these two fools look and sound even better than I already am making them look. Half, half How long was I it? Got, I got nosebleed there. <laughs> no way. I should have said it. Show must go on, Dermy. Yeah. Fair play. Oh. <laughs> Dermy Derm- yeah. Derm- Derm- just got a nosebleed and had to walk out of set <laughs> and we just carried on like there was no tomorrow. Yeah. How are you feeling? You'll have to go in for a stent tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in your ear and just if the, comes out if, the, your nose. if the alien came down and he'd have a nose, please. <laughs> I can't. Um yeah, you've had a few of them in my in our day. Yeah, the weather drives it. Um I'm blessed with very large nostrils. You are. And uh the weather drives it uh very um nose bleedy <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Especially in Canada and stuff where there's like mad humidity and stuff. Mm. They're a pro. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so we uh, we were we were about to dive into, well, I was going to dive into uh, drawing up a quick analysis before I came out here to do the show. And I went on our Facebook page and uh, someone, uh, one of our penguins hilariously put in, um, Barry do we have to watch this game again? Because I really don't want to or something like that. Because <laughs> I usually tell people before they start ranting about Ireland to watch the game again and you might notice any of the difference. And then Paul O'Connor, one of our Penguins, put in, I'd rather shit in my hands and clap than watch that game again. So then I said, I would rather review you shitting in your hands and clapping. So um, why don't we start the analysis of Ireland versus Georgia by analysing what it would be like if Paul O'Connor shat in his hands and clapped. Okay? Okay. It's better than the match. First half was okay. <sighs> was it? Yeah. There's a lot of angry people out there, again. Are you angry? No, not at all, actually. Jeremy, are you angry? 
No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy that the nosebleed stopped. <laughs> yeah, no. I, it wasn't okay. that bad. Hendy went really well. Billy Burns yeah. went really well. McCluskey Look at you, really you're well. such a... Stock deal you, went really well. You're a snake. I'm, <laughs> I'm on to you. You were shitting he's, all over them last week. He's leading you down the no, hall there now and he's kicking you up the air. No Ulster <laughs> players involved last week and he went to town in them. You can't be that blatant. You cannot actually be that blatantly biased. You Would you hear. disagree with any of those those five players? Um, Don't even get me started on Rob Herring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, to be fair, I didn't I didn't think any individual players did, uh, didn't particularly play poorly. Uh, Jacob, again, had a couple of moments that weren't great, but uh, overall I thought... I thought a lot of players did okay. I was more concerned about the game plan, and I think um, that was uh, that was the, what the most of the complaints online were. It's I think um, no one could care less. It was Georgia. You just get them beat, and then you go on. We'll play a slightly more meaningful game against Scotland next weekend. Mm. Can we talk about the forward pass? Did you get in touch with Lacey? I did. What did he, he say? Can, so we were talking earlier on about the forward pass from Jacob Stockdale to McCluskey. Heenan. McCluskey. Oh yeah, so uh, great finish from McCluskey. Good, great pass from Jacob. And it was uh, it was confusing because a couple of years ago, you pointed this out, that uh, this law was changed where you had to take in the whole world of physics and basically when the ball looks like it's going forward, sometimes it's not actually going forward. It's the person is going forward, so the momentum of the spin of the ball makes it... It does actually travel forward, but the ball is in fact being passed backwards, but something to do with gravity and how all that shit works. <laughs> that's, that's it, okay? So we the referees and everyone honed in on it for a few months there where any ball that was considered slightly forward or flat or whatever it was a try it was all no this is the new rule laws this is allowed they're um the tries and then it kind of just slipped Fizz- away it fizzled out fizzled out and then today <clears throat> so much so that it fizzled out there were i saw a few recently where i went oh that law must must have well, they must have been trialing it and it's gone back because there was a few where they were very obviously down that route where they were they looked like they were flat or maybe slightly forward, but because of momentum. that So I was assumed that that law had been changed. And then when that happened today, I was like, oh, it definitely was changed because that was a perfect example of how the person was going forward and passed the ball flat and the ball went slightly forward. Uh, so you pointed this out and I got on to Johnny Lacey and he confirmed that that law was has not been changed. It is exactly the same as it was when they first brought it in. So, so it, it still was, is. It still should lie for momentum. One hundred percent. That was one hundred percent a try. Should That's so been. annoying. It's so mm. annoying the way referees just decide we're going to go this direction for the next while, and then it's almost like one influential referee, one like referee influencer on, on Instagram, um, like just sets everybody a certain direction. And everybody just <laughs> yeah. reacts. Yeah, it's so annoying. There was really, really nerdy chat in the Facebook group there was a physics teacher I forget <clears throat> the name uh, was there? and he summarized it perfectly he said so Jacob releases the pass then he travels forward like four meters and if, and then the pass goes forward two meters from where he let go perfectly on the halfway so you can see the line <clears throat> so he said he has passed the ball back two meters but the momentum has allowed the ball then to shift forward two meters just because he's moving so he says if if um, so because Jacob keeps moving and crucially he has to move just at the same speed or the same momentum that he was moving at like he passed it back and then do you remember for a while they kept talking about oh is it coming backwards as it releases the hand or, or sorry what, what was the expression they, they used for a while it was coming backwards out of the hands mm. which that's that's correct then that's what we're saying but everybody's mm. just forgotten about that mm. yeah um, I, do, I don't know I I the reason why this is annoying, right? Because um, what is the one thing anybody, any like Americans you talk to who have never come across uh, come um, come across rugby before? 
what's the one thing, the one rule that uh, makes our sport distinctive? You have to pa- pass the ball backwards. It's so central to everything we do. And like kids who are learning rugby, oh, you have to make sure you pass the ball backwards. Mm. And they're all like, oh, that's weird. And then you eventually get used to it and you think it's just normal. It's the one thing that like, it kind of describes our sport and we don't even know how to legislate for it we don't even know like so how do you to... think we should have left it left it alone and we shouldn't have brought physics into it oh no i think we i think we have to bring physics i think we have to bring some physics into it <laughs> <laughs> it's it's whether it's the ball it's the ball has to travel backwards but is that relative to the pitch or to the player and i think we're just saying it's relative to the player then that allows momentum but the, anyway, regardless of that, whatever they decide, everyone needs to do the same. So if they decide if, it, if it's relative to the pitch, as in they're not accounting for physics, <laughs> mm, <laughs> then yeah. everybody just just do what you're told, referees, and just continue to ref the game consistently. It's really annoying. And then the other one um, that they seem to have just fizzled out. And did you ask Lacey about this one? I did. Okay, go on. You explain it. Um, so at one stage, a few years ago, there was a period where a lot of defenders were, were reefing the ball. Like they weren't like choke tackling. They weren't um, grasping them to try and go over the ball. They were just holding them up and then trying to reef the ball free. And um, for a while, it was a knock on if the ball went forward, if you reefed it forward. But then they allowed it. They said, that's a good defensive action. You're actually accomplishing something useful. It seems a shame to penalize someone if the ball goes forward. So they said, you're allowed to knock it on whilst reefing the ball free from an attacker. But then they've just forgotten about <laughs> forgotten about this one as well what did Lacey mm. say he said there's a bit of a nuance around that where if it's a if it's a wrestle for the ball <clears throat> and the two players are are kind of wrestling over it and it pops out then it's the first person who's had the ball i think it's their knock on whereas if it's a distinctive tackle and i tackle you and i get in there and i get my hands in and i properly reef it and then it goes forward, then it's considered a knock-on for me. You're you're the ball carrier. No, you're the ball. Oh, you're carrier. the tackler. I get in. I get in. I you get would in never reef the ball off me, son. <laughs> 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 Wasn't one of my strengths, to be honest. <laughs> be tickling you. Give me the yes. ball. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but did he say though that that law was changed, and then was it changed back? I didn't ask him that part. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I know. I don't know. No, I didn't ask him that part. I think I the, the I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried. Certainly, I. I think we've both let our true colors show here that we're both nerdy potholes, even at the best of times. When you started it, you just asked me to ask him. I'm blaming you <clears> completely <throat> for this because I. I know that's. Know. I'm. I'm definitely. I'm. I've definitely my. I my felt cover, like I was potholing him when I, when yeah. I was on it. My cover's been blown, and I, I'm I'm just saying potentially yours has too. Okay, so you were, <laughs> <laughs> but you were happy with uh, with the Irish game. You, there was nothing in that. That no, the second half was so boring. It was like nothing happened. Uh, we just mm. didn't get any momentum, and yeah, it was anything you'd anything you'd criticize about how we played? Um, just our continuity, I suppose. Like we. I, again, the first half was was okay. Passes going to hand. There was decent bit of yeah continuity and like that little circle. There was a few new things actually, and this has been the last few weeks. You know that little shape now that they're doing, where the forward kind of comes short off uh, off nine, and mm-hmm. then the forward other forward comes around the corner and just takes it out the back of them. They did mm-hmm. that over and over, and actually it, it was working quite well. And it's a nice um, little addition, something creative. Like that's what we were asking for. Something a little bit more creativity. That was nice. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, the wee circle pass from Farrell was nice. Back to Billy Burns for his try. Mm-hmm. Again, all that was in the first half and none of that happened in the second half. I think when you're playing Georgia, you just get fed up and you just think, right, we're ahead. We'll probably get the job done. It's hard to stay motivated. Do you reckon? Yeah, it's strange. I think it just dries up. The game just dries up. Mm. It did seem that way. As, as Daryl Breen said in RTE, if uh, we're going off what Andy Farrell said last week where Ireland won the second half against England, um, the second half against Georgia was 3 all, <laughs> which, is, uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> which is a bit depressing. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, I, I just felt the pace in general, uh, the speed of the ball and the, I don't know, 
it's very slow and labored and I'm not slow. I'm not saying that that's because I'm not saying that's because of Murray but I did notice whenever Marmion came on he upped the pace for a for a period and I it could have just been a, a, a nice kind of slick accurate like set of phase play phase plays um whenever he came on it could have been a coincidence but it did look sharp when he came on mm-hmm. yeah no I know there's loads of other factors there but he added something back yeah, back to Johnny May quickly. His in and away <laughs> last week, which uh, was a brilliant piece of skill and created that his own brilliant try. That for me was uh, someone who understood how to create and make space, even though we're saying that he only joined the game <laughs> very late in his career. Uh, and that is something I feel we have been lacking from the Irish attack, that there's a lack of, um, I don't know, responsibility the players are given or that they feel they have or is in their headspace to actually create space it feels like we're still running into people still you know there's not many offloads not many people being put away into space it was quite obvious all the time what we were going to do and no one's sitting down defenders and it's only when you see something like that been done that you kind of realize what we're missing. And um, that's the one thing that worries, not worries me, but I'm just frustrates me. I'm like, fucking hell, this is... But there was nothing There was nothing to do with the system that um, created that opportunity for Johnny May to, to score that try. That was just put the ball in his hands. He's in a bit of space and he's got X factor and he beats a couple of defenders. I don't think there's anything about England as much as there's just something about him. So that's just come, that just comes down to it. Like James Lowe could that, James Lowe could do that. Jacob could do that. <clears throat> but they're not. That's what's frustrating. There's no one doing that. We haven't seen it been done for a long time. Yeah, but Johnny May doesn't do that every week either. Like, Mm. That, that that's not a reflection of what England are doing. England are doing something better than us. That's just a reflection of Johnny May. He's incredible. Mm. Okay. Don't know. Uh, what else? Um, the England Wales game in Parky Scarlets. Mm-hmm. Did you know? Um, it looked like someone made an announcement to all of the teams playing the Autumn Nations Cup. And it was that press conference that Eddie Jones did the week before where he said the team that kicked the most win the most games or win more often than not, whatever exactly how he worded it. But anyway, kick more. Everybody was kicking more. Teddy Toma yeah. kicked the ball every time he got the ball. Yeah. He's a terrible every, kicker of the ball. Every Autumn Nations game was absolutely shit. Dire. In my eyes. Yeah. England, were, England were, did the same thing. They were terrible. Mm. And the worst thing about kicking at Parky Scarlets is um, that would have been after your time. That was You would have been like, no, I played. Did you play there? Hmm. I always thought. Did you play on the wing there? Did you ever? I received, you probably don't remember the lights. Yes, the lights, the lights are, are awful. Are, yeah, they're too blinding. low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the ball goes dark. It goes higher than the lights, and it goes mm-hmm. dark at the top of the flight. Yeah, um, very tricky place to play. I remember. Yeah. I remember the first time I played there. I was like, oh my god! I think I was on the wing, and it was blinding. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, very, I don't know, it's a weird, weird place to play. Why are they playing there? It's in the middle of a car park in the middle, in the middle of a shopping centre. Don't um, know, because Cardiff were playing at um, Strati, or sorry, Ronnie Parade Why are they playing well? Millennium? Is it too expensive to play at the Millennium or something like that? Don't know. Mm. Yeah, all pants. Sorry to talk about that. The Argentina-Australia game on Saturday was decent enough. Um, there was a funny moment at the start where they had a... Um, Aborigine elder who came out and had a few words of inspiration uh, before or after the national anthems and uh, it's lovely and he spoke very nicely and he got to a point where he said uh, or something like that in uh, to in Irish (laughs) to welcome the New Zealanders Uh, and then he said to New Zealand yeah and then something in Spanish. That wasn't my best Spanish. No, it was more Portuguese. It was he Italian. Said, <laughs> he said something in Spanish. And then he paused and he had a look in his face that he could not remember who New Zealand were playing. <laughs> uh, and then I was like, oh, he doesn't remember. What's he going to say? Is he going to say Argentina? And then he just goes, the Netherlands. <laughs> Did I hear that right? I rewind back. 
Did he say the Netherlands? I'm pretty sure he said the Netherlands, which is a brilliant leap from wherever he he thought. He was like, fuck, who are they playing? I just he, he, second he, your head. he was stumped. He had a moment. Yeah. He took his time. He did the sums and thought, you know what? I bet you they're playing the Netherlands. I'm and going with Netherlands. He saw, there was a right over his right shoulder. You could see the three referees and they were all wearing bright orange tops. So, <laughs> And then the two teams are either side so I reckon he in his head went fuck and he was like visualising over his shoulder what jersey they were wearing and all he could see was the orange in his head so he went Marco van Basten <laughs> the Netherlands <laughs> um, <clears throat> he should have just mumbled he should have just mumbled something yeah we'll leave him I off know, I know a fella who um, introduced one of the Alicadoos at Balamina to his girlfriend they said the Alicadoos said you're not going to introduce me and he goes, um, Jimmy, whatever his name was. Jimmy. Uh, uh, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't remember his girlfriend. <laughs> oh, sorry. The other way around. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking dope. Uh, other way around. Oh, I'm going to get brought to the front of class for that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Ireland versus Scotland next week. Grant will, if, if, uh, if Ireland go out and get... Uh, beaten by Scotland, which at this point is quite possible because Scotland are a very good side and um, Ireland aren't playing well and we could be beaten by them. If we are beaten by them, despite Scotland being a very good team, the pressure will be piled on Andy Farrell from Twitter anyway. <laughs> uh, what do you think? Do you think if Ireland go out and lose to Scotland next week, do you think he's under pressure? <sighs> No, I don't. I don't think he's. I certainly don't think he'll lose his job. He's definitely under more pressure. Um, I don't think they will get beat. I think they're going well enough to beat Scotland. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, when you say under pressure, you just, like <laughs> as you say, it's just people on Twitter <laughs> calling for his head. Yeah, Twitter and the media, but that's important. There, the media and Twitter and the people when they speak. They are the zeitgeist that get into the people who are playing. They get into their heads. So the more they talk, the more they criticize, the more it's like, what? That gets into players listen to that stuff, coach listen to that stuff, people have powers of being, they are a few. It's all, yeah, you know, I agree. It's all press, it what, what's going on? And uh, I think maybe he, he, he played a strong team today, right? And he was, he could be he could feel a backlash from that because if he'd have gone out and given a load of new caps and played a weaker side and they had a result like today he'd almost get away with it but by playing a strong team he's going to be criticised very heavily for that performance and then if they lose to Scotland same again and it just creates that <clears throat> doubt in people's mind did he did he play a strong team though? I'm not saying I'm not saying it wasn't a strong team, but I'm saying if his strongest team was who went to Twickenham, there was a lot of changes from that. Well, changes, but still a very strong team. I know he's still got a lot of injuries and and yada yada, but yeah, I suppose there were there were quite a few changes. You're right, um, but not wholesale changes which we would have seen before and probably that kind of uh, dud game in the in the autumn internationals, you know. We Ulster signed a Georgian prop one time for injury cover and um, he was what you would expect whenever you're signing a Georgian prop and we, we didn't really expect anything else from him apart from his scrummaging ability and uh, the press conference in the press conference his his statement whenever he arrived was I look forward to scrummaging at Kingspan <laughs> <laughs> not playing rugby yeah oh, they scrummaging did. They did. yeah they did they did well in the scrum yeah. Sure. <clears throat> yeah. All right, we'll move on from it. There's not much to be saved from it. Uh, a win's a win if there ever was one. We'll be back in part three with our new segment. Okay, welcome back. And time for the four powered provinces of Ireland brought to you by Energia. Ireland's greenest energy supplier. Now, as you all know, Trimby and I are from opposite ends of the country and we have spent most of our lives travelling the length and breadth of Ireland to play this wonderful game of rugby, whether it was Musgrave to Monkstown via Malone or Monsters. We have done it. 
That's right. We've been there. We've done that. We've stood in the cold outside the clubhouse for an hour because mum forgot to pick us up after an under-10s game. Then we got into the shower and our kit. But guess what? We loved it. We firmly believe it's those experiences in grassroots rugby that laid the foundation for our love of the game. Not everyone could beat the All Blacks on a beautiful sunny day in Soldier Field in Chicago. Sorry. Give me Tuesday night doing rock and drills in a 10 meter wide mud bath in Korean on, in February anytime. That's what it's all about. And that's what brings people together. Right to air. So to celebrate the positivity a club can bring to its community, we have teamed up with Energia, who are the power behind Irish Rugby, Leinster and the Energia All-Ireland League to bring you a new feature called the Four Power Provinces of Ireland, brought to you by Energia, who are Ireland's greenest energy supplier. Energy I want to inject positive energy into rugby from the national and provincial teams right through to grassroots. So each week we're going to put an Irish club under the spotlight and show the positive impact a club can have on the community and all of its members. Think Graham Norton's Red Chair where we get someone from your club to talk about the positive energy from the club and how just fabulous it is. And of course, any funny stories would be welcomed. Graham Norton. This week we are delighted to be shining a light on Trimby's home club, Coleraine RFC, and we are joined by club pothole Greg Jordan. <laughs> Let's get him on. Okay, welcome to the show, Greg Jordan from Coleraine RFC. Greg, tell me, is there a shrine for Trimby when you walk in the door of Coleraine RSC that everyone has to bow to the Messiah? <laughs> the urinal. It's quite funny, actually. It's, uh, it was uh, only maybe two years ago I, I met um, Andrew, but uh, it's one of those guys that I feel like I've known him forever because of all the stories you hear and, you know, all the boys telling stories from their schoolboy days and um, when Trimble was playing there as well with them and, how a few other stories I probably can't repeat. Uh, be, huh? They're the ones we want. We want. To, we don't want to hear how good he was. Uh, he made me sign a contract, mate. <laughs> <laughs> he never. Does he ever show up? I, I expect. Nah. Do you, do you ever show up down there, Trimby? And I got kicked out. I got kicked out of the WhatsApp group, Kiwi. <laughs> <laughs> you sharing photos, mate? <laughs> <laughs> I, someone said to me, so um, so Kiwi. I, I whenever. I'm calling him Kiwi here because everybody calls him Kiwi. Why? And um, <laughs> and uh, it's only just occurred to me that um, it, uh, Barry was like, what's his name? And I couldn't think what your real name was for a second. So <laughs> uh, I was trying to wonder if, if anybody actually calls you Greg Jordan. But um, so Kiwi got in touch with me about um, coming and playing for Korea whenever I finished up with Ulster. And uh, I was chatting to a few mates of mine and they were like, oh, um, what's the story you're thinking about? And I was like, I don't, I don't know, you know. A back's give me a bit of bother, you know, make a few excuses anyway. Yeah. And they were like, if Kiwi has your number, you will 100% play for Korean <laughs> at some stage. <laughs> <laughs> that guy will chase you and chase you. <laughs> so, uh, he said to me, if, you, if I play one game, do you promise you'll never ring me again? <laughs> I, and I, I reckon he was so bad that you were happily, happily, happy not to call him. Oh, I don't think I've thrown him since. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's turned, the tables have turned. I'm the pothole. I'm oh, like, Kiwi, pick me, pick me. And he doesn't want me. <laughs> so, uh, up against it that day, up against a good Limavati side. Oh, we were dire. I was, I was the worst player on the pitch. But anyway, we've talked about that already. Kiwi, <laughs> tell me, what is, um, what is so special about Korean? Oh, geez, where do you start, mate? It's uh, obviously coming from New Zealand. Rugby's been a huge part of my life. It's um, it's actually what brings me to Northern Ireland. Um, I came over to play for I'm a Rugby Club, which is, uh, at times people will say to me, oh, what, do you, what brings you over here? And you say, oh, I came for rugby. Oh, did you play for Ireland or Ulster? I have to break the news to them now. <laughs> <laughs> I was showing your boots. Oh, man. <laughs> But uh, it was Omer Rugby Club. I, I come over and um, uh, ended up in Coleraine in 2010, and uh, it's been a huge part of my life since then. Um, I've got two sons now as well. Jack's a five-year-old, uh, Kaya's two, and it's you know, basically paving the way for them now in terms of having a club there for them to be part of in the future. And uh, maybe a year ago, it didn't look as... Uh, it, it didn't look a bright prospect. We were uh, in a lot of trouble in a lot of areas, you know. But um, typical club sort of fashion, we pulled together 
really well. And, and the most important thing is for us, and so many people have pulled together, that's what pulled us out, you know. So um, it's it's a big part of my life, the club. Uh, I've played a lot of roles down there um, in coaching, coached the first, seconds, thirds. I coach the P1s and 2s now and the third 15 now. And I also coach the under 15s at the um, school as well, grammar school. Jesus. Trimby's Busy man. <laughs> well, listen, you, you can't make everything, you know. I'm uh, I'm <laughs> late to everything. I'm, uh, <laughs> but I'll get there. That's all goes part and parts part of club rugby and underage rugby, right? Um, uh, that's the best part I remember, I remember going up there. It was my first ever uh, abroad trip, if you want to call it, under 10s. We used to go up <laughs> all the way from Limerick on the train. We'd get the train from Limerick to Dublin, which would take half a day. And then we'd spend a few hours in Dublin and then get the train from Dublin up to Belfast and then a bus to Coleraine for the under 10s Coleraine competition. I'm talking 80, 81 or 1991. Uh, sorry. Yeah. 91, 92. Um, uh, and it was an unbelievable competition and you were always the best team by a country mile. Um, I suppose we only Gillen, inv- invited um, shit <laughs> <laughs> We were very good, excuse me. The Gillen Crothers winger, brilliant winger, went on to play Irish schools. Is he still involved in the club? No, I think no, he's, uh, he no, Gillen, no, Gillen's actually in, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's in Canada. Ah. He's, uh, I think he's got a big job in a marijuana factory, I believe. Oh, right. Unreal. Get so him on the show. <laughs> there's another man who's a bit of a legend i know so much about but i've never met him you know okay but, yeah, he's uh, a serious player uh, mm. um, no. so trimby so you're a um, moment for us kiwi you um you're um you're sick you're not sick at the minute you're injured at the minute you wrecked yourself uh, not playing rugby uh, you finished playing rugby am i right and then no you're just playing i was actually <laughs> No, I'm still playing. I'm oh, still really? playing. I saw the surgeon there last Monday and wow. uh, s- said to him, uh, is there any way I can get back to play rugby again? So he said, right, yeah, we can. We can do surgery. I'm going for surgery on Tuesday this mm-hmm. week. So coming. Jesus. So I've uh, torn the, uh, snapped the front ligaments in the front of the foot and then d- damaged the ones on the side as well. So I'm going to get a tight rope put in. Oh, also. yeah. I've had one uh, of them. They're great, Craig. <laughs> oh. Yeah. How old are you? Do you want me to ask? Uh, no, I'm 39. Fuck. I'm 18. And you're going to come back from a, a syndesmosis ankle injury and surgery. You lunatic. He loves it. He loves it. There's very few people. Oh, very few people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, everybody. Like, it was hilarious. When we started our family, we decided, the wife said to me, right, it's time to hang the boots up. And I said, right, okay, no worries. So I said, played my last season and hung the boots up in the changing rooms and took a photo of them and sent it to my family and friends and said, right, that's me, that's rugby finished. The next pre-season I was there, and that was four years ago. I've been here ever since. (laughs) (laughs) What position are you, do you mind me asking? Uh, I started off as an out-half, and I've moved to centre in my later years. (sighs) So you're not hiding from the the, the hits or the the feckin... (laughs) <laughs> tough side of it you're getting stuck in as well my god uh, here's me, here's me. I, I was complimenting myself for doing a bit of gardening today for the physical activity uh, so. Uh, it's so many years playing out half you know you yeah. spend that, that many years uh, avoiding tackles so the body's still fresh <laughs> yeah well you find out you always find out how popular you are you are i know we're talking about that kind of club community feel you always find out how popular you are whenever whenever you're not well and you need to go in and get sorted out by the surgeon. So I'm assuming you're going to be surrounded by people bringing grapes and gossip magazines on Tuesday after your operation, <laughs> Kiwi. <laughs> oh, it's pretty rock and roll, mate. It's pretty rock and roll. <laughs> no, to be fair, I've been very well looked after. Um, just the last three weeks, I haven't been able to do anything at all. Obviously, can't drive, um, can't go to work. And I'm a self-employed plumber, so the calls are still coming in and there is the old call I have to go to. So I just ring one of the boys and they'll come and lift me and round we go, you know. <laughs> but uh, I've, I've, I've had uh, boys taking me to COVID tests for the surgery, you know, MRI oh, scans, mm. x-rays, picked me up when I did it, took me to hospital. So now I've been leaning on the boys heavily. That is club rugby in a nutshell. <laughs> Isn't that just club rugby? My God. Yeah, it's like a little uh, self-sustaining community where you know someone in every department who can help you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great stuff. I mean, otherwise, I wouldn't survive, boys. That's brilliant, Keith. So great, that's great to hear. Great to hear you're getting a bit of support and hopefully we'll see you 
Oh, back on the pitch, maybe, um, depending on how, how it goes down with your missus. <laughs> yeah, uh, hopefully, hopefully, and, and, and to be fair, mentioning the missus there, she's been a she's been a saint. It's not been easy. She's got to do everything. She yeah. works maybe sixty hours a week as well. She's got a big job. Mm. It requires a lot of time, so she's run off her feet. But <laughs> yeah, hey, well, but it's all right. I'm sitting back with a pint and yeah. uh, with a beer. Good man. Well, if you maybe if you retire from playing. Then you can concentrate on the coaching as you seem to be doing. You seem to be splitting yourself through what ten different teams there you mentioned, <laughs> as well as um, caretaker, selector committee, um, oh, director of rugby. I don't, I, I, uh, Barry said to me, "What's his role?" And I was just like, "I think he's just the club pothole. I think he just does everything." Uh, well, you know what? I uh, I'm, I'm consider myself a bit of a cork. If there's a whole old plug it, like yeah. But uh, um, no, I was I was the chairman of rugby a couple of years ago. Um, and heavily involved with everything, but uh, I find myself more effective staying away from a, an official role. And you could get uh, more done, you, you know, and get more ground on the more groundwork done, as opposed to things paperwork and behind the scenes. I'm no good at. Great. Yeah, good paperwork's man. no good, boys. Yeah, yeah, good man. Well, Kiwi, <laughs> listen. Good luck with the surgery. I um, hope everybody. Um, gets around you and we'll see you back on the pitch at some stage you're certainly back coaching doing something and helping out the club but um, good luck to you and good luck to Corey yeah yeah good man appreciate it guys thanks very much Brilliant. cheers Kiwi thanks Kiwi cheers man see good ya. man bye okay welcome back that was great very much enjoyed that um, thank you very much, Kiwi from Coleraine RFC. Now, Jeremy, do we have um, a huge amount of penguin and pothole correspondence this week? There was a lot of action again on the Facebook. Them page. penguins are gone absolutely wacky. They're like they're like a load of wasps at the end of summer, where they're just flying into our sticky <laughs> cups of water and pints. stinging children yeah. and pints and <laughs> pints of bulmers, and they don't know their arse from their elbow or their fins from their flippers. I don't know what's going on with them. Um, there was a large variety of stuff on the show. Yeah, there on was the, sure on the was. page this week. There was um, heap of madness. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it wasn't much rugby stuff. A lot of just yeah. Random. The balance is is the balance. Are, are we slightly over penguining? Should we <laughs> should we increase up the, up the potholeness? You'd like we more potholing. I think we could just fine tune. That we just need to keep that healthy healthy balance. I think every Sunday we should get together and just dip the Facebook group with uh, Universal Indicator paper or litmus <laughs> paper and just mm, taste it. Taste a little bit penguiny this week, just ever so slightly. More potholing. Interesting. I don't think, the, I think the most amount of feedback we've ever got for anything on the page was about Trimby's magical mystery walk from Glasgow Airport to Scott's run this week. Is it Scott's run? Scottston. Yeah. <laughs> Scottston. Uh, yeah, someone asked me, what were you doing on the walk? We didn't ask you that. What were you listening to? Were you listening to anything or were you just walking? I, I kind of had this image in my head that you weren't even, you weren't even thinking about anything. You were just thinking like... <laughs> Now you now you put your left foot in front of your right foot. <laughs> <laughs> now you put your right foot in front of your left foot. You were just walking. I was getting ready for the story about the the that guy meeting the Alakadu at Balamina Rugby Club, and I was just like, "Don't cock it up! Don't cock it up! Don't cock it up!" They got the wrong way around. <laughs> then you got it the wrong way. <laughs> for three hours, you're prepping that story. <laughs> uh, I I can't remember. I was listening to a couple of podcasts, but I can't remember what. Listen mm. to a bit of music, probably some Hermitage Green, I would imagine. Doesn't even. Um, I don't know. I really <laughs> don't. I was pretty much. empty. I was pretty, um, pretty mindless. <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, well, the feedback was great. There was a lot of artwork done. Very creative penguins again. Uh, Dermy, or had anyone had any 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 stories? Or there was. I went through it, and <coughs> some stuff tickled my fancy, and then some stuff was just weird. But do you know what? I'm going to. I, I'm going to override it all and just. Uh, give an honorary mug to um, Kate McGrath. Kate McGrath is very, very, very loyal, prominent. Very, very active, active. Has made uh, yeah. made me lol a lot of times. Yeah, you do get there is a status. You can get a status in the Facebook group if you like make enough posts or get involved. Um, like there's founding members, and then there's there's other status levels in the Facebook group. Hmm. Um, we should replace those with just pothole of the week and penguin of the week. But Kate <laughs> is. Very prominent. Um, yeah. Gordon Adger 
um, has been involved for a long time as well, actually. And he was upset that we mispronounced his name. Um, he said, Badger. I did it. Yeah, <laughs> He said, I did it in the old setup. Barry did it in this one. He said, to make things future uh, or, uh, easy for future reference, lads, repeat after me. Badger, Adger, Badger, Adger, LOL. Three guesses what my nickname in primary school was. So the first three guesses that came in were Pothole, Todger, and Dave. <laughs> 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 I thought that just sums up perfect level of penguin and pothole balance. Yeah. Great yeah. stuff, folks. That was brilliant. Yeah, well done. Um there's been a lot of people on to us asking us where where they get the merchandise. So mm. uh where can you get it? Can you get it through our website, which is potholesandpenguins.com? Uh, you get to our Shopify page, or else I think it's on the Facebook page. I'll post it again later on. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, there's some Christmas stuff out there now. Loads of people are after buying the bum bags and the sexy socks and the hoodies and the T-shirts, and they're flying out the door. You're great, lads. Christmas presents are going to be... Did you ever play the bum bag song? I must do that next week. Oh, yeah. It's pretty out there as well. Yeah, okay, we're coming next week. Bum bag song. Dermy and I wrote a song in a... Amsterdam, <laughs> oh, yeah. called "You Can Put It in My Bum Bag," and uh, no space cakes were involved <laughs> in the writing of this song. <laughs> 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 yeah, we we we'll, we might uh, tweak, tweak it and have it apply to rugby. Okay, we'll yeah, do, that do my well. best. Uh, okay, that's more than enough for this show. It's been an interesting weekend. Thank you all very much for my birthday wishes. Uh, I felt the love from all the Pottles and the Penguins. It's lovely to get a bit of um, love on your birthday. So sound for that. And uh, look, we'll all look forward to Ireland versus Scotland next week with a little bit of positivity. And uh, yeah, I think we can we can definitely do better than we could today, right? Yeah. Okay, have a wonderful week, potholes and penguins. Uh, This has been us. Hope you've enjoyed. Take it easy. Party on. Party on. Party on. Party on.